Hi everyone, my name is Tony and I'm a senior product marketing manager here at HomeAway. I thought I'd try something a little bit new with this video, different from the webinars and blog posts you might have seen us do in the past. So let's dive right in. So I hear a lot of feedback about, you know, the website is changing again. Why is HomeAway always making all these changes? And so I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit more about A-B testing and kind of the HomeAway culture around how we approach testing. I have here Eric who is a senior director of product management, and he'll be able to give us a little bit more insight into what all this means and what you guys are seeing. Well, Tony, thanks for having me. Uh, as Tony said, I'm part of the product management team at HomeAway, and my team and I are focused on listening to customer feedback and turning that feedback into insight we can use to make a better product. So every day, we're trying to get a better sense of what types of changes we can make to uh, create more bookings for our homeowners and property managers and just make a better experience for travelers. So our product management team is uh, operating over 30 different websites globally that are providing uh, vacation rentals all over the world in many different languages. And so it can get pretty complex to, for example, uh, understand how a change we might make for a traveler on HomeAway could impact uh, another traveler in France or Germany. And so we follow a really methodical and disciplined process for managing change. And a key part of that is A-B testing. So that's actually a good place to start. So for example, you're just not going to change the color of a button to, say, purple, because you like purple more than blue, right? I like to think back to uh, science class in elementary school, mm -hmm. where uh, we learned about the scientific method. Right. And really, A-B testing is part of the scientific method. So it's a controlled online experiment where we're trying to uh, learn something about traveler behavior. And if you think back to science class, you would run an experiment in the lab where you'd have a, a controlled environment where you're, you're trying to not have something change, and then a, a test or a variation where you're, you're changing something and measuring the effect of that change. Well, we're doing the same thing. Only difference is we're doing that on the website. We have millions of visitors that hit our websites every day, which allows us to run those experiments online with real users and so we can understand when we make a given change how it performs for them versus the control where we've uh, kind of left the experience as it was before. Right. So simply A-B testing is an online experiment and we're measuring a certain group of travelers versus another and seeing if the change that we made is actually achieving the goal we set out to. Okay. So that's also a good point. There's other companies that do this, right? It's not just HomeAway that kind of made this up. Yeah, actually most websites you go to these days are doing some form of A-B testing. So if you go to Amazon.com, Google, eBay, et cetera, really any shopping or e-commerce marketplace, you're going to notice uh, from time to time changes they're making. That's because just like us, they're constantly trying to improve their customer experience and they're doing that through A-B testing to use data to make really good decisions. So where do you get these ideas from? I'm sure that's a question our viewers are thinking right now is like, do these guys just make it up or, you know? Where does all this information come from? Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit more about the process. Um, you know, we start with observations, and the observations come from a wide variety of sources. One of the most popular is our customer feedback channels. So our homeowners and property managers and travelers are giving us feedback every day. Uh, we really appreciate and value that feedback, and that feedback can form the basis of observations about something that we see we can improve or, or fix in the experience. Okay. So we start with those observations. Uh, then we'll often do what we call user experience research or user experience testing in a usability uh, testing lab environment right. where we can uh, get a really better sense of those observations and start to fine tune them a little bit. And then we'll actually state a hypothesis. A hypothesis is simply a, a statement uh, of something that uh, we, we want to prove to be true. And that forms really the basis for a given A-B test. Okay. We'll run the test. We'll run the A-B test in our, our live website environment. We'll measure the difference between the control group and that variation that we created. And then we'll rinse and repeat. Okay. And in that process, we're learning a lot about what changes work. And we're constantly getting more and more data to form new observations. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you think we can share that you can talk about we've done recently? Sure. So I'll start with a simple example. So we had an observation um, based on feedback that uh, one of our sites, VRBO, had more search results shown per page than one of our other sites, HomeAway. Okay. So for maybe kind of historical, arbitrary reasons, VRBO has for a long time shown 50 vacation rental results per page, okay. and uh, HomeAway showed 30. Okay. So observations, well, one, those are different, right. uh, and perhaps one of them is more optimal than the other. Mm -hmm. We weren't sure which one was best. Okay. So we decided we would run an A-B test to um, see if one of those actually drove a higher level of conversion 
in that it made it easier for travelers to find the right rental. So we set up a test where we had a control variation on HomeAway that kept it at 30 results per page. And then we had two variations. One variation that reduced the number of results mm -hmm. to, I believe it was 18. Okay. And then one variation that increased it to 50 to match what we have on VRBO. Okay. We ran that test for a couple weeks where travelers were randomly and evenly split across each of those groups. And we measured the difference in engagement and conversion. Conversion meaning um, how many travelers actually booked from that group. Okay. What we found was really fascinating. We found that it was actually better to show 50 results than 30, and that we saw what we'd call a statistically significant increase, meaning that there was a, a very measurable, unbiased result, in that with 50 results on the page, we'd get more bookings than with 30. Okay. And that's a great win for travelers and for homeowners. And so we rolled out that change to all of our sites and all of our traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if we had just made a guess, and kind of blindly picked one of those options, right. very likely we would have been wrong. Right. And so it was valuable for us to have run that as a controlled experiment right. and make sure that we picked the optimal number of results to have. And uh, we'll continue to test and learn further in that area. So what happens when tests fail? Um, you know, in the end, doesn't that impact the bookings uh, and inquiries that they might get? Yeah, it's, that's actually why we call it test and learn. So a really important part of our product development philosophy and A-B testing is that these tests are uh, really about learning uh, what works, what doesn't work. And so it's actually natural that many tests are going to fail. That's actually a good thing okay. because that means that we're learning um, about which changes are not doing what we expected and avoiding rolling them out to all of our travelers mm -hmm. because we don't want to do what you're Im implying in terms of rolling out a change that's negative right. to our homeowners and property managers' businesses. We just want to roll out the changes that actually create more bookings and vacations for, for all travelers. And so that's a key part of the process. Actually, what we find, not just at HomeAway, but across the industry, is typically more tests fail than win. Mm -hmm. and, and that's because we're getting insight from those tests. It's actually really useful to run a test and, and have a negative result, turn the test off. We'll uh, really look closely at the results and understand uh, what parts of the experience did not uh, work as expected, and that makes us able to make a better decision about the next test right. and avoid rolling out that change to, uh, to more travelers and having you know, broad negative impact from right. it. So we're really keeping the exposure of those failures to a minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, they're part of the testing process. Right. They're an important part of how we work, but by running those tests for a short period, mm -hmm. getting the data and insight from it, right. turning them off and moving on to the next one, we're really keeping to a minimum the, the negative impact of the test right. while only rolling out to all of our sites and traffic and travelers those changes that uh, are a win and that are actually increasing bookings. And by rolling out win after win, we're increasing bookings for the yeah. whole marketplace. And, and really that's the thought I would leave in, in closing is that one of the uh, positive trends that we've seen mm -hmm. as we've gotten better and better at our A-B testing philosophy is that bookings are going up overall. Yeah. And so we see that the methodology works. And by using this approach for our product development, we're able to uh, you know, really raise the whole tide, mm -hmm. get more bookings yep. for, um, for everybody. And so we're gonna continue to work at this process. Okay. All right, I think we'll call that a wrap. As a reminder, at the end of the video, there is a link for you to submit feedback. Again, I would love to hear um, anything you would like to share. And thanks again for joining.